Here's how to set up a trust for a blended family. Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Small. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning, we do probate, we do it well. Uh, if you have questions about this or anything related to estate planning or probate and you want to talk with us over the phone for free, cmslawfirm.com. Okay, so we have a blended family that we're talking about today, right? So we have prior marriages or, or prior kids in particular. Now we have come together. Spouse one has kids from a prior relationship. Spouse two has kids from a prior relationship. They want to create a plan that works for everyone and they want to make sure that everyone is accounted for. In a situation like this, the biggest problem or the biggest um, thing that you're trying to account for is when spouse one dies. So when the first spouse dies, how can we make sure that the deceased spouse's kids are taken care of? Okay, this is um, easy and hard all at the same time. Here's why. If you give everything to the surviving spouse, the surviving spouse can do whatever they want with it, including cut out their stepkids. If it's a will and you give it to your spouse, same thing. If it's a plain vanilla revocable trust and you give everything to your spouse, same thing. Okay, a revocable trust remains revocable even when the first spouse has died. So the surviving spouse can change it. They can move things in and out of the trust. They can do whatever they want. We're looking for some ways to generate some certainty with regard to distributions to the kids from the first spouse to die. Okay. The way that we typically do that is with a vehicle called a credit shelter trust in Washington state. You can do this a couple different ways technically. Okay. The first way to potentially do it is to just have each spouse create their own trust. Okay. In Washington state, which is where we are, we are sort of a strict community property state. Okay. So each spouse is 50 50 with the community property. They each own half. They can do whatever they want with it. One thing that you can do is you can create two separate trusts. Each spouse puts their property into the trust. You can create a situation where the successor trustee for the first spouse to die is not the surviving spouse, or they can be co-trustees with the surviving spouse. And you put language in there that the surviving spouse is only to receive distributions from the deceased spouse's trust for health support, education, maintenance. So basically if they need it at the discretion of the non spouse trustee, so spouse one dies, surviving spouse still has their half of the assets. They can live off of those. They can use those if they get in a bind, if they have, um, you know, significant medical expenses and they need help, they can get that help from the deceased spouse's side. What happens though on the deceased spouse's trust is it says when the surviving spouse dies, my kids are going to get everything from this trust. The surviving spouse's kids are going to get everything from the surviving spouse's trust. Okay. Does that make sense? Perfect. You could technically roll this into one revocable trust, but it's a lot cleaner if you do separate trusts in this case, in my opinion. Now in Washington state, you often have another problem. Oh no, God, no, God, please. No, no. Which is you have estate taxes in play. Um, state taxes in Washington state are uh, start at sort of $2.2 .2 million and up. Okay. If you are married, then you are looking at these potential problems and you want to make sure you can preserve the, the first spouse to die's estate tax exemption. Okay. Not going to get in the weeds too much on that. One way to do that it was, is with something called a credit shelter trust. With a credit shelter trust, you can preserve the first spouse's estate tax exemption, not pay any tax at the, at the death of the first spouse. And you still can create a scenario where the surviving spouse can have access to the deceased spouse's assets if they are needed, but not exert a lot of control over those assets. So the first spouse to die can be certain that their kids are going to be taken care of, are going to have opportunity from those assets, are not going to be cut out from the surviving spouse. Hopefully that makes sense. If it did, that's great. If it did not, that's okay. Set up a time to talk with us, cmslawfirm.com. Happy to run it through you and your specific situation. 
uh, as many times as we need to to help you figure it out, okay? Because it is hard to get the first time often. All right, that's it. Hopefully that helped. If it did, that's great. Um, if you want more of this stuff, like, comment, follow, subscribe, do all of those things. If you have questions, ask them. I will answer them. If you want some of your, of your own specific help, cmslawfirm.com. All right, that is it. As always, I am Christopher Small. I'm the owner of CMS Law Firm. We do estate planning. We do probate. We do it well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Appreciate you. And I will talk to you again soon. See ya.